go. We're going to do the external anatomy of the heart first, and then we'll go to the inside. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at the front. So this is the anterior. And the very first thing you see across the front is this diagonal line. Sorry. <laughs> That's the anterior interventricular sulcus. All right, sulcus is a groove. And since it's on the anterior side or the front, all right, we call it the anterior interventricular sulcus. Okay. Um, I'll go through the arteries and veins on the heart model. All right, this is up here. These are our two atria, and the ventricles are much bigger at the bottom. Okay, since this is the patient's left side, this would be the left atrium. Down here would be our left ventricle. All right, this would be our right atrium, and down here would be our right ventricle. Across the front, look for this little finger. That's your pulmonary trunk and that's going to branch into the pulmonary arteries which are going to go out to each lung. Okay. This little shiny membrane on the outside is the epicardium and it's also known as the visceral pericardium and I'll take either answer on the exam. Either answer is fine. Okay. While we're here on the front, I'm going to stick my right index finger in the end of the aorta. So basically the aorta can't, comes off the heart here and then curves around and so they've cut it here and it actually will go through the thoracic cavity. Sometimes they give that the special name, um, thoracic aorta, and then it'll pass down through the diaphragm into the abdominal cavity, and they call that the abdominal aorta. A lot of times the books will call this the aortic arch. Okay. In the cow heart, we have two branches off the aorta. We've got BS, I heard it, yep. And it's a cow heart, all right. So. The first one on the aorta, as it comes off the heart, this is our B. This is our brachiocephalic artery. Make sure you put both, brachiocephalic and artery, okay? Yeah. The second one, this is the S. This is the left subclavian artery. Very good. This is the left subclavian artery. Okay, I need all of those. Um, you'll see why when we go through blood vessels today. Okay, I'm going to flip her over. Well, obviously it's not her, but we're going to flip it over. All right, so now we're looking at the posterior, okay? Uh, running straight up along the back here, this is our posterior interventricular sulcus. On the heart model, I'll show you which arteries and veins are in this sulcus, okay? You can see I have basically folded up. This is um, our inferior vena cava. I'll show you that in a minute. When I fold these up, a lot of times you'll be able to see the coronary sinus running along in here, and I can see part of it right here, all right? It's a thin-walled vein that oftentimes runs along somewhere in here, all right? This is the coronary sinus on this one, okay? You'll be able to see it. Probably on the exam, I'll have stuff flipped up right here, and I'll have a pin in it like that, okay? So that's your coronary sinus, okay? So now this is the patient's right side, and this is the patient's left side. Okay. That's why Jordan's going to post it online. You're Which best battery? side? No. It says that I don't have enough storage for oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that says iPhones for you. I know. Okay. So this is my right atrium. So remember in the cow, superior vena cava comes in like this. Oh, mm -hmm. this reminds me of something. Inferior vena cava comes in like this. All right. Not at a 180 degree angle. This one's actually got quite a bit of inferior vena cava in it. Okay. On the exam, if you've looked at the study guide, it says you can't touch anything. Okay? It's true. You can't touch anything. All right? We don't allow it. But what we are going to do, or what I'm going to do, is when I pin this thing, okay, now you can see that they're touching. I'm actually touching the probe inside here. So this is the inferior coming up. Uh, it's the inferior vena cava, and this is the superior vena cava. They both dump into the right atrium. You'll notice that, in, unlike in the human, the human's here at about 180 degrees. This one's a little uh, at a different angle, I would say. Um, you're not going to be able to touch anything. So what I'm going to do is when I pin it, I try and pin it as obviously as I can. Okay. So for example, I would stick a pin out of it straight up like this. I would stick a pin out of the inferior vena cava like this. Okay. So when you see those over on the right side, you can say, huh, I think that's the superior inferior vena cava, even though you can't touch it yourself. Okay? 
So, uh, those are going into the right atrium. It's got a lot of stuff still left on it, pericardium. All right, now over here, this is where you'll find your pulmonary arteries and your pulmonary veins, okay? Um, pulmonary arteries, arteries in general, are much thicker walled. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that, but that's got a really thick muscular wall to it. And when I put my finger in it, luckily you can see I'm right in the pulmonary trunk there. So this is one of the openings to the pulmonary artery. Okay. But you're not going to ask us that on that, are you? I'm, I'm going to have to. I've got to ask you a, at least a pulmonary artery and a pulmonary vein on here. What I'll try and do is ask something like this where you can see that the wall is real thick. And then the pulmonary vein is usually below it, or I should say inferior to it, and it's collapsed. Okay, So that's the, the vein right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a much thinner wall, not nearly as much muscle, and it's completely collapsed. Okay. So that's the vein. This is the artery. And usually the veins are inferior. Veins are down here inferior to the arteries. They're usually further up here. Okay. But not always, but go with that. I'll try and make sure I get a nice thick muscular pulmonary artery for you and a nice collapsed obvious pulmonary vein. Okay. So I think that's everything on the exterior. Okay, again, we have our atria, our ventricles would be down here. We talked about the epicardium, sulcus, blood vessels. Yep, I think that's everything on the outside. Okay, so what I'm going to do, we're looking at the anterior again. I'm going to open up the anterior. Okay, this is a frontal section. No, listen. <laughs> Sorry, I don't have a scalpel. All right, now how do I tell my left side? Size. The left side is bigger. So when I have my anterior here, my front, and I open it up like this, all right, it's pretty obvious. Okay, this is my left side, and it's the patient's left side. It's going to be on my right. But remember, some hearts might be like this. And I don't do that to trick you, all right? I do that because um, sometimes, like, a valve might look better on this side, or um, a vessel, something might look better from this side, okay? Where's the so, line that separates? This the is the line that se separates them. That's the anterior interventricular septum. Oh my God, not, sorry, not sit down. Sorry. That's the interventricular septum. It's the septum means wall, and it's between the two ventricles. So this is the wall that separates the right from the left. Can we just say septum or we gotta say? You gotta say interventricular. But just remember, inter between ventricular ventricles. Okay. So, this is my left side. So, what's the name of this valve? Bicuspid. Oh, <laughs> exactly. This is my right side, so what's the name of this big old valve? Tricuspid. 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 Exactly. Try before you buy. All right. What are the name of these little strings? The yes, chordae tendinae. Sorry, chordae tendinae, or you can pronounce it chordae tendinae if that'll help you spell it. Okay, <laughs> whichever you one you want to do. There's going to be a um, muscle at the bottom Pathway. if you follow these down. Exactly. If you follow the chordae tendinae down, you can see these little bump muscles here in the wall. Those are your papillary muscles. Okay, here's another nice papillary muscle here. Okay. Um, some other things that you can see, all right, in the ventricles, you have these ridges, these deep ridges, and um, those are called trabeculi carni. Again, trabeculi carni is fine, okay, however you need to remember it to spell it. All right, we have the epicardium on the outside, a very thin translucent membrane. The majority of the heart wall, what is it? Endocardium. That's myocardium. Remember, myo means muscle. <laughs> So this is myocardium. It's a good guess, though. This <laughs> shiny inner membrane, endocardium. Endo meaning within. Okay. So that's the endocardium you find lining uh, the ventricles and the atria. Okay. Um, what is this chamber? Left ventricle. Remember the chambers of the atria, the two upper atria and the two lower ventricles. So this is the left ventricle. What's this one up here above the valve? The left atrium. This is the left atrium. All right. This would be the right, right ventricle. This would be the right atrium. Yep. All right. And you can see, if I stick my finger up here, I'm in the right atrium here. 
we've got, uh, let's see, in the right ventricle, uh, this one's not real good, but I do see it. Oh, I don't want to cut it. Inside the right ventricle is what we call the moderator band, okay? Only in the cow heart, okay? It's only in the right ventricle and it's only in the cow heart. Basically, it keeps the right ventricle from overstretching, okay? It's not a chordae tendonae, it's thicker, it's a little more muscular. So that's it there. What's it called? Yeah, it's called the moderator band. Okay, I think it might be on your second page. Um, one more valve. Oh, two more valves I want to show you. Mm -hmm. All right, on the inside here between the left ventricle and up through the aorta, this here mm -hmm. is going to be your aortic semilunar valve. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can see part of it right there. Um, the other half of it was over here. So that's the, we've gone now through the bicuspid valve, tricuspid valve, aortic simulator valve. How do I find the pulmonary simulator valve? It's in the middle. It's on the outside. It's on the outside. Remember we did a little cut here? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. On the outside. And then we lifted it up and this is not cut enough. But actually it might be cut enough. Um, that's actually it right there, I think. Yeah, that is it. Okay. That valve there is actually a pulmonary semilunar valve. All right. And the best thing to do is cut the heart right at the base of uh, the pulmonary trunk, and that would be where your pulmonary semilunar valve is. So the only way to see that is through the outside of the heart. The aortic semilunar valve, really the only way to see that is uh, here. Okay. Are there any questions about this before I go through the heart model real quick? So there's an aortic semilunar, semilunar valve yes. and a pulmonary, pulmonary. pulmonary semilunar valve. Correct. And a moderator band. And a moderator so band only in the cow heart. The coronary sinus is that only on the back side, on the posterior yes. side? Yes, you're only going to see it on the posterior. Okay, absolutely. And everyone's gonna, studying. You're going to see everything's kind of folded up. <laughs> everyone's dead except you. Keep it, keep it going. Actually, I want to have you stop it in a minute before we go to the heart. Good. Uh, back is starting to hurt. <laughs> Are there any other questions about oh, the right heart? Yeah. Okay. Stop it real quick and we. Okay. So, we about ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready. Okay. So, again, we have our front. This is our anterior. So, here is our, you tell me, anterior, anterior interventricular, interventricular sulcus. sulcus. That's right. That's our anterior interventricular sulcus. Okay. The right artery, the, the right, the, sorry, I should say the red here in the sulcus is the artery. All right, this is the anterior interventricular artery. That's the anterior interventricular artery. The blue is the vein, and this is the, anybody remember? Great cardiac. Great cardiac vein. Okay, all of these are called coronary arteries and coronary veins in a general way. But when I stick a pin in it, I want to know the specific name. So this is the anterior interventricular artery and the great cardiac vein. Flip her over on the back here. This uh, this groove right here is the posterior interventricular sulcus. Very good. All right. Again, the red is the artery. So this is the posterior interventricular artery. The blue is the vein, and that is the middle cardiac. Vein. So it's great cardiac vein, middle cardiac vein, anterior interventricular sulcus, posterior ventricular sulcus. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay. Um, another thing that you're not going to find on the cow heart is remember here in the human heart, you've got three branches off the aorta. The first one is still what? Brachiocephalic artery. That's right. It's BCS, where the cow heart only has BS. All right. Um, so this is the brachiocephalic artery. The C stands for left, left, common, left common carotid, carotid, carotid artery. artery. I keep forgetting yeah, you get left common carotid artery, and then this is the left, left subclavian artery. artery. Okay. Um, so then I remember, I gotta remember to between left. this is your pulmonary trunk. This is what looks like the finger across the cow heart. All right, right there in white between your pulmonary trunk and your uh, aorta, that little white thing there, ligamentum arteriosum. That's the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay. Oops, sorry. Fell apart. That's your ligamentum arteriosum right okay. there in white. Okay. Um, again, these are our 
atria here. Down here would be our ventricles. If I open it up, you can see which valve is this. This is tricuspid because it's on the right. All right, remember this is your patient's right side over here. So this is the tricuspid valve, bicuspid valve. What's that? Pulmonary semilunar valve. This is your pulmonary semilunar valve here because this is your pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary arteries. All right, and this is your aortic semilunar valve. This one here next to my fingernail. It's the aortic semilunar valve. Okay. We've also got, um, you can see our superior vena cava and our inferior vena cava coming in at 180 degrees in human, okay, and both of them dumping into the right atrium. Um, you still have uh, cordi tendini, these little strings here. Ooh, this is papillary muscle. All right, you can see that little bump there. And you can see also the trabeculi carni, the ridges inside the ventricles, okay. Um, what are these in red here? Those are veins. These are which veins? Pulmonary veins. Very good. All right. Remember, this is the pulmonary trunk, which is going to be pulmonary arteries branching off here in blue. And these will be the veins coming back from the lungs. Okay. I think I've got everything on here that, that I might. Ah. What's that? Inferior. Well, not coronary artery. Coronary. It's a big old vein coronary. called the coronary sinus. Coronary. That's your coronary sinus. See how it's on the back of the heart? It's the only place you're really going to see it. Um, and it would be your your vessels, all the openings for your vessels would be in here. Um, he, this is a big old blue. Okay. So it's, right. vein the back. it's a vein. Uh, it's a special name for a really big, um, special name for a really big vein like that is the sinus. Okay. So that's the coronary sinus on the back right there. Because what's going to happen is the uh, middle cardiac vein is going to drain blood off of the heart wall, off of the heart myocardium, basically, and into that coronary sinus. And this is going to return that blood to the right atrium, along with the superior and inferior vena cava. Mm -hmm. Okay? Are there any questions about the heart model? So the, um, the veins and the artery, they're not color specific. They, okay, let me, I'll do one little, mm. one little rule, I guess you can say. You're right, the colors are not coded as to which are arteries and which are veins. Um, they're coded as to the color, as to what kind of oxygen they're carrying. So if it's bright red, that's supposedly oxygen. oxygenated blood. So that's your oxyhemoglobin. All right. Um, if it's blue, that's deoxygenated blood. Again, I hate to call it deoxygenated because it's got 75% of its oxygen still bound. But for the most part, it's, it's your deoxyhemoglobin. All right. Saturation. Uh, yeah, how much how much oxygen the hemoglobin's carrying? Okay, so um, so if it's deoxygenated, it's blue. If it's fully oxygenated, it's red. So for the most part, most of the arteries are red. Most of the veins are blue. That's not a hard and fast rule here because the pulmonary artery is taking deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Mm -hmm. So here the artery is blue, whereas most of the time arteries are red. And then, of course, the blood is becoming fully saturated with oxygen and it's coming back to the heart um, into the left atrium through your pulmonary veins here, and so they're red. Okay, But most of the time, arteries are red, veins are blue, but not always. Okay, That's for the blood they're carrying. That's a good question. Any other questions? You feeling good? Yeah. All right. You will. You will. Okay. That was good. Thank that was good for you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Here, that was, hit I move. <laughs> that was rough. Yeah. It's gonna be good. So for our models, we don't have. You're gonna have several of these. You have a couple of these. Probably one or two of these. Now, okay. we do okay. what we did in the first test with the possibility of having multiple answers. <laughs> yeah. Same. Still recording. You could. In fact, um, I don't usually do it like I won't usually do right atrium twice on, on the cow heart.